So about seven years ago, I had created a YouTube video on how to go about monitoring a server with a batch script. So now I kind of want to recreate that except using PowerShell. And as a matter of fact, we're going to use PowerShell 7 because we want to take advantage of some of the parallel features that was introduced with PowerShell 7. So to get started, the first thing we need is to create two files. The first file is going to be called our servers.txt. Now, if you want, you could create a JSON file to do this instead. But for this example, we're just going to create a flat text file. So it's going to have things like Google, Yahoo. Um, we're going to have a default gateway, um, yah.eeeeeeee. -e -e -e. And then let's, that should be about it. All right. So the next thing we need to do is create our monitor script. So it's going to start with our param, which will provide our parameters that will be available for the script, our begin block, process block, and our end block. Now, the param, of course, like I mentioned before, is the different parameters that you'll have to pass into the script. The begin block is used for anything that, anything that you would want to do before the rest of the script starts. The process is the actual body of the script. And end is typically where I would throw anything that's being returned back from the script. So typically the first thing I want to do is check to make sure all of my dependencies are there. So we're going to use if test path. Now what, it was, what is it that we're looking for? Uh, we need two things. We need the location of the script, which is going to equal ps script root. And the next thing we need is the servers file, and that's going to equal wherever the script is located backslash servers.txt. So what this is going to do is this is a variable that's already set up and configured when our script is running, and that's going to equal the location of where the actual script file is located. So if my script file is located in this temp directory here, then it's going to the ps script root, which then would be the location variable here, will be equal to this path right here, because that's where the script file is. And it's very useful because let's say I change my directory to the C drive, and then I go and ex execute this monitor ps1 script. As long as the servers.txt file is in the same location as my ps1 file, it'll be able to find the text file, no problem. Now, what we're doing here is we want to make sure that our server's text file exists, because if it doesn't, then we have nothing to check. So we're trying to make sure that this file exists. And so what this is going to do is it's going to test the path to the servers.txt file. And we only want this to run this script block here if it's not true. So this is going to test the path. If it exists, it's going to return back true. If it doesn't exist, it's going to return back false. So with our if statement, we're trying to see, is this equal to false? Does the path not exist? If it is false, then we're going to row server that txt file not found in location servers file. And we want to say at location because n would insinuate a folder at is the exact path. Okay, so the script's going to start up and it's going to make sure our text file exists. So let's, let's just run this to make sure it works correctly. Cool. So if we go and we modify this to server txtz and we execute, it should throw, which works just fine. All right. So once we have our text file, let's actually go in and make sure that we can open it and read in the content. So let's get content servers text file. 
So once we do that, if you just run it, it's going to it's going to spit everything out into the screen here. And that's because get content is going to return back the contents of the file. We don't want to do that. We want to actually iterate over each line in that file. So to do that, we're going to use the for each object. You don't need to tell for each to split this up by new lines. It already knows how to do that. Now that we have the content of our file, we're going to iterate over it line by line. The, when I'm doing something like this with for each, and I'm going to have a bunch of nested uh, blocks, not, not too nested, we don't want to get too carried away. Um, I like to save the current position in the file as a variable. So we're going to just call this server equals dollar underscore. Now we're going to create a status object. And it's going to PS custom object. So this is going to be an object that we can then output to the screen as a table. So we're going to say server equals server online. This is going to be a Boolean. So it's either going to be true or false. And then we'll have a message as well. And we're going to set this to null for right now. So now we have a status object. And the rest of the script is going to then modify the properties on that object based on what we find. So let's go ahead and do status dot online is equal to, and we're going to do this open close friends here because we are going to test our connection to that server and make sure that the status is success. And the way we know that is because if we do test connection to google.com, you'll see that there's a property here called status and its message is success. Another thing we can also test for to see is, is the DNS name unresolvable? Maybe that would be useful for the person looking at the script if they know that it's not online, but not only that, we're not able to resolve that DNS entry that they've entered in. So let's go ahead and do a test connection. And we're going to do a count. And as a matter of fact, let's make this a, a, a parameter that we can change when we execute the script. So let's make this an int. Let's also make this a string. This is a string. All right, and this is ping count equals one. So if you want to change how many times it tests, you can do that. So we can say ping count. And we're going to say target name is going to be server. And we want to get the status. And we want to check if it's equal to success. Now, once we have all that information, at the very end, We want to output the object. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And so as you can see, Google is online, Yahoo's online, our default gateway is online, but we actually have an error here because one of our entries in here can't be resolved. It, it can't resolve the target name. We can actually work around this. Let's check to see check to see if this is an IP address. There's multiple different ways you can go about doing that. You can do IP try parse. Um, I've seen a lot of people do that. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it this way only because I see most people use try parse, and I kind of just want to show a different way of doing it. Um, but we're gonna create a we're gonna cast this as a boolean type and we're going to say server as ip address so we're going to we're going to try and see is this server an ip address so if it is then we're going to run this block of code here else It's a DNS entry. So we're going to say 
we're going to attempt to get the IP address from the DNS entry they've provided us. So we're going to say IP equals, and we can use resolve DNS name here. Now, what it looks like when you use this commandlet, is this, it's going to output an IP address or a list of IPs, depending on how that DNS entry was set up. And you could, if you wanted, only grab the type of quad A for the IPv6, or you can just grab the A record for your IPv4 entries. We don't really care for this. As long as it resolves, it resolves. We're fine with that. Um, let's go ahead and just say the name is going to be server. And let's go ahead and try that. If we just run this, what happens? So the name does not exist. Now we don't want this here, right? I mean, we don't want our script erroring, throwing error messages out like that because we know it can happen. So let's account for that. So let's just say for error actions, we just want to silently continue. We don't, we don't actually care if it can't resolve because we know it's going to happen. So the next thing we can do is determine did it resolve or not so let's use the string class and say is null or empty on the IP okay so we have an IP else could not resolve all right so we either have an IP, so cool, we can run this right here again. We could also throw this into a function so we don't have to do it twice and we only have one section to update if there's an issue. Uh, but for right now, let's just go ahead and do that. All right, so if we could not resolve, then we are going to say status.online is equal to false and status.message is going to be equal to could not resolve DNS name just, just to be a little bit more specific so let's go ahead and try that okay so test connection ping count server one and I just realized what I did here <laughs> I completely flipped this around <laughs> let's just say false equals there we go now we should be able to run that. There we go. Yeah. This is null or empty is going to return true if it is null or empty. And we want to check to see, like we did with the test path, if this is false. Now, I could have just switched the bodies around and that would have been fine, but it, it, it's fine. It, it works. All right. So now we have our output. So yay.e is false it's not online and the reason is could not resolve the dns name now we could do this and we could just run this over and over and over again or we can create a parameter to tell the script to do this over and over and over again so let's create another parameter for our script and it'll be a switch and it'll be called forever okay and so we want to do not docker we want to do let's collapse this all right we want to do this until forever dot is present is equal to false So it's always going to run the get content checking to make sure all the servers are online at least once. If they didn't pass in the forever switch, that's it. It's going to break out of this do loop. But if they did pass the forever switch, then it's going to keep running this over and over again. Now, what we also don't want is for it to just keep doing it over and over and over again very, very quickly. We also want it to sleep. But... We only want it to sleep if they passed in the forever switch because if you run it one time, there's really no use for you to sleep after. All you're doing is consuming resources for no reason. So let's go ahead and say if they passed in the forever switch, 
Then we want to start sleep. How many seconds? Sleep seconds. So we're going to set another parameter up here. Another int. Sleep seconds equals one. Uh, let's just set it to two. So we're going to sleep every two seconds by default. So if we run this, and we'll need to run it like this, monitor, we'll say forever, it's, it's not going to output it exactly how we want. As you can see, it's, it's, it's just keeping all the text on the screen. Not very clean, not very useful, only because, yeah, that's nice that you can look back at some of this. If you want to keep history, we can always write that out to a text file with some dates, but we don't really need that. We just need a real-time view of everything. So we want to clear the screen when that's done. So let's go ahead and clear the screen if they've specified the forever switch. And for that, all you just all you say is clear. And that'll that'll clear the screen. Now it's still not gonna look right because we need to do something about the buffer. So as you can see, it outputs, but then it blows away the header information. And we can, we can fix that. We just need to pipe that into the format table. And we're going to do that because we're also going to do something else pretty cool with our, uh, our color coding for our output. But so let's come down here. And after it's done with the for each object, let's do a format table. Now, if we run this, it'll output and keep the output nice and clean with all the header information. It might also be useful because we're using PowerShell 7, we have access to the parallel processing for each object. So let's use that. We also don't want it to get too out of control, but we also want to tell it how many threads to use. So let's use throttle limit. And let's set that as a variable, as threads. And another int. We're going to default to 5. So it'll try and do 5 checks at the same time. Now let's run this to make sure everything's working right. And I did parallel wrong. <laughs> All right, so we now we have another issue with our count. When you use parallel, you don't have access to these variables outside of the for each object. They're kind of out of scope. So you kind of run into the same thing in C Sharp when you're using dispatch. Uh, it's, it's pretty much the same thing here. It's, it's very easy to fix this. All you have to do is use using. And that's going to access variables outside of our for each object. So pin count isn't accessible because we didn't specify it in here. You really have to think of this block of code with the with the parallel as being its own little PowerShell script inside of your PowerShell script. And to access anything outside of it, you use using. So pin count, we say using pin count, using, and that'll access our variables outside of the for each object. So let's go ahead and try that again. And I didn't hit save. <laughs> All right. So for this last part, we're going to modify our table output. Now this is somewhat well documented and I'll include the link in the description of how you can change the different color coding and kind of how this works. Uh, but we want to color code so that we can easily look at our list to determine, okay, well, is this good or bad? So let's go ahead and modify our format table to say server. We still want the server name, but we want to change the online portion so that we can easily look at our list to determine is this host online or not. So we're going to say label 
because we want to set the label of the of the column. We're going to set it to online because it, it's the online property. And then we want expression. And that's going to equal this block of code here. And the block of code is going to be a switch. So we could make an if statement. That's that's all cool, no problem. But for this example, I'm just going to use a switch. And there's two different things we're testing for. We're testing to see, because it's Boolean, it's either going to be true or false. We're going to see if online is true or if online is false. And we're going to set the color based on that. So we're going to say true. If it's true, we want color to be equal to, uh, we're going to set it to 92, and then we're going to break. We can just say break. All right. If it's false, we're going to set color equal to 91. And that's going to be red, and this is going to be green. Okay. So outside of the switch statement, still within the expression, we're going to set E, our escape character, as a char, and that's going to be 27. It's just an ASCII character, 27. Now this part, it's going to set the color, and then it's going to output the value of online, and then it's going to do the escape character again. Um, You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second, but it's always difficult for me to remember exactly how this goes. I always just have to take note of how this works <laughs> or, or what to output. Our escape character, 0m. All right. And then the last thing we need to do is output the message. Now let's run this. And as you can see, if it's online, the text is green. If it's offline, the text is red. We could take this a little bit further and add a bunch of expression statements for each line in here, but I kind of didn't want to go and, and do all of that. So this is a not too complicated way of creating a little PowerShell script. Um, and we can even go in here and we can say, and we can say, I want to change the sleep seconds to 10 seconds. And let's see what else do we have up here. And we can just go ahead and run that. And that way it's not refreshing too often, but yeah, pretty, pretty simple script. We did some more advanced to an intermediate PowerShell coding here, taking advantage of PowerShell seven. But if you're not too sure exactly how this all works, I am putting together a PowerShell 7 course to go over how to do things like this and actually do some more advanced coding, like using class objects to pass around. Uh, but I'll post about that later on, on that course. But if you got anything out of this, go ahead and let me know what you're using your PowerShell script for to monitor. Um, if you have any questions about how this works, go ahead and leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I'm hoping to get a lot more technical, advanced technical topics out on my YouTube channel so that I can continue to provide this knowledge of how to use PowerShell, Windows, Linux, networking, security as much as possible and really trying to build my audience out there. Thank you.